Ladies and gentlemen, ba back again. Solomon Mike, another video, and we're talking about programming today. Ways to hit through kind of plateaus um, in different ideas and ways uh, for you to gain more strength and more muscles. If you're into it, if you appreciate the videos, I appreciate you. Be sure to subscribe, give this thing a thumbs up, we're diving in. So, uh, a couple things to look at when we're programming. A lot of people ask about videos on programming, how to program, and it's very difficult because programming is a lot of like critical thinking, experimenting in a way but just built around certain rules and tools so there's some basics you need to know right the frequency volume intensity we've gone over all those kinds of things and it's piecing things together uh, it's kind of finding what works with that individual although most of these rules work for most it's just about finding that balance of frequency and volume um, as well as blocking things out so <clears throat> basically we got a little experiment we're running I got my boy Riley, um, you guys seen him in some of the vlogs, he helped us build this thing uh, and it's someone that I coached like six years ago or so um, and now we're training partners, buddies and now I'm excited because uh, he's been on some lower frequency training with some pretty high volumes, high intensities, um, he goes really ham on a lift, one squat, one bench, one dead a week um, and he's just kind of floating, I think his motivation's maybe not there right now uh, and then his lifts are improving but they're not going crazy, uh, it kind of came to a, uh, 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 what do they call it, rear end, uh, uh, I don't know, I can't think of the phrase, I haven't had that much caffeine today, um, so it came to a rearing halt, that's not it but that'll work. Um, the other day when he missed a squat so he was wrapping up he's trying to go a little heavier he's trying to hit a double um and so today i'm writing this program and he's going to start um and basically what we're going to start with doing is just getting a little volume block get him back in sleeves not focusing on the wraps i have some numbers in my head i want him to hit um before we throw the wraps back on but i think his best squats maybe high 500s in wraps he's benched about 319 and he is pulled around 600. Uh, and I think those are all competitions. Strong kid, really, really hard worker, and that's why I'm excited to work with him. Um, and we're just going to go along maybe once a week or every other week and give you guys updates on him. Since he trains with me, it'll be easy. It might be footage, and it might just be one minute of the video. Uh, obviously, you guys are, uh, the feedback is good on my comeback, and I'm trying to build my strength back, so we're gonna continue that journey, continue teaching a little bit and hopping in him. Uh, so step one is I wanna get his frequency up. I think that he could probably handle uh, for now, because he goes so hard on the lifts, we're just going to creep in two bench days, two squat days, one deadlift day, and one heavy RDL day. He pulls conventional and it should be just fine. Um, and so how are we going to do that? Basically what he does now is one main lift for two or three really hard sets, and then he does back off. So on squats, he's been doing like pause squats uh, as his back off, and he goes near RPE 9 uh, on those drop sets. So we're going to cruise everything down to an RP8 or below um, as we up that frequency. So we'll still have the main squat day. He'll handle a little bit heavier volume, a nice little single, get him used to heavier weights on his back, which is something I think he lacked in training. He lacks a little bit of confidence when he handles those heavy weights because he's so focused in on his rep work and his volume um, that he might handle like 80% for all out sets of seven or eight. Um, but then in a couple weeks, he tries to handle 90% and it just feels so heavy. He's not used to that single. Uh, he's building a lot of strength and a lot of muscle. Um, but again, the practice of the skill of the lift, uh, as well as getting, you know, not necessarily the nervous system, but uh, our mind and those muscle fibers firing for one rep maxes uh, will keep them going. So um, on our main squat day, our main dead day, our main bench day, we're going to handle some singles around RPE 8 with some back offs, probably being threes. Um, start with three sets of three and we'll ramp that volume up as we go. Four sets of three, five sets of three, easy slick cyclical uh, volume progressions. Um, all the back off beyond that. <clears throat> probably won't be that much. Um, the variations will come on the other day. So we'll do one of the bench days will probably be like a wider grip. He, he benches with kind of a moderate grip and I want to see if we can move it out. So we'll do a wider grip that'll be super light just for some volume. Um, and then the third day will be a gimme. So we'll handle something around 70, 80% and we'll handle probably to start uh, sets of two to three. And I just want him to fire into that kind of the cat, the compensatory acceleration training. Um, but again, I want it light enough that it doesn't beat him up and gives him a little bit confidence benching three times a week. It's something he's never done. Um, and we'll do similar with the squat. So on our main deadlift day, it'll be handling a nice RPE around nine, eight. He's never really handled RPE or practiced with it. So I'm gonna give him guides. Uh, I'll throw in um, general percentages with some progression. You know, I'll say, hey, hit you know 485 to 515 today on the deads. And I'll have him get his last warm up around 455 and make the judgment call himself so we can start to learn how he's feeling on each day and that's part of the RPE so that eventually we can handle more singles and more RPE based work down the road and he'll be confident in his judgment 
beyond that, it'll be heavy threes. Um, and then we'll do, we'll probably have competition squat for that day behind the heavy deadlift. Uh, but it'll be, it'll be quote unquote speed rep work. We'll do three sets of five, 70%, just have them getting some light volume in, not worrying about it. Again, it'll be two to three weeks. He'll probably be a little bit sore from higher frequency. Um, and the weights may be moderate on his singles. Uh, until we get that confidence back mentally and just till his body gets used to those So we call those gimmicky days practice days to get the volume back up uh, And then again on the heavier squat day the back down will be uh, stiff legs And then that one because it's a stiff leg and it automatically will limit the amount of weight He can deadlift because it's not a competition lift We might go a little bit closer to a higher RPE eights or nine So I'll say hey handle a heavy set of uh, five to eight RPE nine on stiff legs uh, That way it's going to be limited by his grip. We'll probably have him do over, double over a way to hit, make him not get too much general fatigue as we're getting in kind of this, you know, transition phase or bridge phase, as a lot of people call it, from one block to another. Uh, and this is like a double bridge, upper decker, Golden State Bridge, Golden Gate, Brooklyn Bridge, because uh, we're adding a lot of frequency that he's not used to. So we'll see how he adjusts after three or four weeks. I'm gonna type that up actually right now. He's here with me. Um, not here, but there. Um, and so we'll type that up, get him going. Uh, and hopefully we'll see the progress. You know, I'd like to get him handling those heavier singles so he can get some confidence in like eight weeks that he's handling loads regularly that he never has and that he's in just better overall shape. Uh, we'll throw in kind of an upper lower split probably on the accessories. He trains four days a week. So probably on the lower days, we'll have him do a lot of back and by. Uh, on the bench mains, uh, even though he'll be kind of squatting on those too. We'll have him do a bunch of chest tries. Uh, overhead, he has some mobility issues uh, and a beat up shoulder. He used to be like an extreme sports athlete, so he's a little beat up there. Um, so we'll probably avoid that, but that's where we got the hammer strength machines and have him really press out on all that. So uh, getting going, I'm excited. I haven't done a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching in a very long time. I don't offer it, I'm sorry. Um, I mostly just coach people um, that are close to me. Uh, you know, shout out my boy Tom Callis. I coached for a long time, people like that. Uh, I offer all my programming at kaizentraining.com. It's all my mind, all my brain babies. So you can check that out if you are interested in programming. Uh, but hopefully you guys comment below, how many times a week do you squat? How many times a week do you bench? How many times a week do you deadlift? Where is your sweet spot? And have you tried to transition or push that? Um, obviously we don't want to just automatically squat seven days a week because if I can get the same amount of progress from three days a week, why do seven days a week? Uh, we can spend our time with our families, our loved ones, our food, our sleep, other hobbies, and we want to do as little as we can while making optimal progress. There's end of diminishing returns on all that. Um, yes, you probably can squat bench dead every single day, make really good progress for a while, but eventually, uh, you know, in a year or two years, the progress you'll make overall won't be the same. So comment below your frequency, comment below any questions you have for me or Riley uh, on programming. I'll try to cover it loosely in the vlogs coming up. Appreciate your new videos every Monday, Wednesday. Salam Mike, follow us, Third Street Barbell, Instagram, twitch.tv slash Salam Mike, 50% facts every week. Appreciate you, I'm out.